Okay, guys, well, we're here with Justin Peters at the Shepherds Conference, and uh, Justin's been kind enough to just pull aside for a second, talk to us, and we wanted to discuss a really important topic, which was uh, the Bethel Movement and uh, what what we should think about it, how we should approach it, and what are the problems with it, obviously. And so, Justin, it's good to see you, brother. God Amelia, bless you. Good yeah. to be with yeah. you, brother, always. We're, obviously, we're having a really good time at this conference. It's yes. a great conference every yes. year. Uh, how many times have you been to the conference? Oh my goodness, it's probably my um, probably my sixth time or okay. so, sixth or seventh. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm not able to come every year, but I've been the last few years okay. in a row. So all right, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a, about the same here. I yeah. love the fellowship and hearing testimonies and stories from people all over the world. It's, yes. it's great. Yeah, yeah. What's been your What's been your highlight so far? We're here at the last day of the conference. So oh my goodness, um, there's Phil Johnson. He walks by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's oh. right. Um, he's next. He's on the docket. So oh, he's on the docket. <laughs> cool. well, oh, the highlight. Oh my goodness. Um, We're doing an interview on Bethel. All right. Yeah. Uh, I, I think for me, honestly, it's just that. The I mean, I love the preaching. That's always edifying. But hearing the testimonies and talking to people from all over the world. I think I heard them say there's 60 some odd different countries represented yeah. here at the yeah. Shepherds Conference, and and uh, the the impact that uh, the, the teaching has made in people's lives and churches and yeah. you just, in the unity, the unity that we have with our brothers and sisters in Christ, regardless of where we're from, regardless of what language is spoken, regardless of how much melanin we have in our skin, you know, none of those things matter. It, it's just, you're with family. You, it's just, this is family here and, and I love yeah. it. I love it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Justin, you, you've been educating the body of Christ for years now on word of faith stuff prosperity gospel and things like that and when it comes to Bethel that's a pretty dangerous group what, 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 what are some things as I think about them what, what's wrong what's the main thing that you would say is wrong with a movement like Bethel I mean, if we look on YouTube we see some of the theatric, you know, theatrics and sort of the absurdity of you know their services and stuff like that but really what's what's undergirding all of that stuff yeah, what's undergirding it, Emilio, is a, is a false gospel, basically. Uh, Bethel is kind of one of the flagship churches, I guess, of the what's called the New Apostolic Reformation. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Michael Brown says that such a thing doesn't even exist, but I can assure you that it does. Yeah. Uh, it, is, it is everything that word faith is, the emphasis on health and wealth and prosperity, guaranteed money, guaranteed physical healing. It's, it's all of that and even worse. Mm -hmm. um, it, they have even a, 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 a heavier emphasis on miracles, signs and wonders, modern day apostles. Uh, and, and their eschatology is also kind of like, like post-millennialism on steroids. They believe in what's called dominion theology. They believe that it is their task to Christianize the world. But by that, they don't mean they don't. They don't do that by fulfilling the Great Commission, right? Yeah, yeah. They're supposed to take over the various institutions of the world and to Christianize them. The, the political mandate. You, you may have heard the term Seven Mountain Mandate. Where the political, uh, the entertainment system, the the uh, educational system, all these all these different mandates. We're supposed to Christianize. Oh, Christianize the world, kind of even militantly. Uh, make the world Christian and then and only then not will Jesus come back but can he mm. come back mm. and so um, so that's that's part of it but also they, they have a faulty view of God they have a very aberrant view of God a very aberrant view of man an aberrant view of Christ his person and his atonement uh, basically they have they hold to a, a hyperkenosis view of Christ, that, that when Jesus came on this earth, he completely emptied himself of his deity, not just of his glory, not just of his exalted status, or, or even uh, some of his uh, rights to exercise his attributes, but they believe that he emptied himself of his deity and, and uh, was just a man who, who he did his signs and wonders as a man, and nothing more than a man, who was in a right relationship with God. And uh, they teach that, in fact, Bill Johnson has actually said that Jesus, this is a quote, Jesus was the most normal Christian 
who ever lived. <laughs> and so you've got a different Jesus. Uh, they, they have a different atonement. They believe that Jesus paid for our sins not on the cross but down in hell yeah. and had to be reborn. He actually had to be born again. Jesus had to get saved. Wow. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a heretical movement. So the, the emphasis that we see on miracles, signs and wonders, health and wealth, that's what gets the press. But that's just some of the bad, low-hanging fruit off of a rotten theological tree, a tree that's rotten at its root. So when we're talking about any group like that, a lot of times it helps to expose the leaders who, who, who are the focal points, who, who, who's doing the teaching, who's informing the group, you know? What yeah. do we know about Bill Johnson? I don't know much about the guy, but uh, in terms of who he is, where he came from, or even what, he, what does he teach? Yeah, well, he's, of course, the pastor, quote-unquote, of Bethel Church, quote-unquote. And I say quote-unquote because Bethel is not a real church and he's not a real pastor. They don't meet the biblical definition of, of either. But um, he heads Bethel Church in Redding, California. Uh, he, along with John Arnott, Stacy Campbell, Todd White, Todd, Todd Bentley, uh, uh, Rick Joyner, you know, they're the new apostolic reformation movement. And... What we're seeing today, Emilio, is that the more classic kind of old school word faith like Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, is merging with NAR, New Apostolic Reformation. Oh, wow. And it's just kind of becoming this this one stream of, of heresy. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's what we're seeing today. But Bethel is has got their school of supernatural ministry, Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. Mm-hmm. And young people from all over the world are flocking to this thing and they're they're enrolling in this school they're supposedly being taught how to operate and signs and wonders and miracles and things like that is the, is the draw card is it is it the music is it the worship is it the emotionalism what what, what is the main yes. draw to this it is it is all of that it is the the music uh, you've heard of Jesus culture oh yeah which is bethel music and we can kind of throw Hillsong in there as well, even though it's a different church, but it's a, kind of the same stream. But, uh, yeah, it, it's definitely driven by the music and emotion and experiences. Uh, I've watched these services, and they'll, they'll play the same song. I've seen the same song last for 20, 25 minutes. Just a few words a over and over. over. Yes. <laughs> and it plays on people's emotions. It disengages their minds. This engages the intellect, which the Bible tells us never to do. Sure. But uh, the, the intellect is disengaged, and it plays on people's feelings, their emotions, and experiences. It, it you know, you you get a buzz basically, you know, and you see, you watch the services, and and people are shouting, they're crying, they're jumping up and down, they're twirling around in circles, dancing. You know, it's a very experiential driven movement yeah, yeah. and uh, and they claim to be able to teach you to operate in signs and wonders so you go out and you know you heal the sick and you right. supposedly raise the dead which yes. they which yes. they never do yeah, but, that's right. That's right. but they make the claims they, they've even made claims of their students walking on water oh, boy. I've got that on video not the actual walking on water because that didn't really <laughs> happen but but the claim of it happening yeah <laughs> It's uh, funny how those kinds of things never get captured on video, right? Right. <laughs> you know, I, I, if I saw somebody walking on water, I'd, I'd probably take video of that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's um, right. At but, least a selfie. Uh, yeah, something, right. <laughs> and uh, But, you know, talking about that, you and I were talking just before we started recording. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that Bethel has been known for around 2012, 2014, was the glory clouds. You've heard of this, oh, yeah. the, the gold yeah cloud and that that appears in their services well long story short there is a a friend of bill johnson's who pastors in miami florida named uh, guillermo maldonado he's the pastor of el rey jesus king jesus church in miami he's kind of the bill johnson of miami and they're good friends with one another well in 2016 i was preaching at a church in miami miami bible church A lady came up to me after the service was over, and she said, uh, she introduced herself, and I I won't give her name, but honest, this this is true. Uh, I just want to protect her. But she came up to me after the service, and she said, Justin, you know about 
Bethel Church and how they have the glory clouds and the gold dust. And I said, oh, yeah. And she said, well, I used to be a member of El Rey Jesus, King Jesus Church, Guillermo Maldonado. And I said, oh, yeah, I'm very familiar with it. In fact, when I was there, I actually went into El Rey Jesus to, to look around. But she said, um, I was saved out of that church. She said, but when I was in it, I was a false convert. But when I was in it, she said, I was pretty high up in the church. God saved me out of it. But when she was in it, she said, it was actually my job. She said, I was given, she and a friend of hers were given canisters of gold glitter, basically, finely ground gold glitter. And she said, during the service, it was our job to go up and dump it into the ventilation system. And it would blow out onto the congregation. She said, that was my job. I did that. And um, Bill Johnson, Guillermo Maldonado are good friends with each other. Bill Johnson also had the gold dust at about the same time. So reckon where he got that idea. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, I mean, it's, it's, they're, they're charlatans. They're complete frauds. And the level, of, the level of mind control people have to be under to be there, to be completely abused, spiritually abused by these leaders. You know what I mean? So uh, let's transition to some of those people. Like, how, how, how would you suggest that we minister to those people, try to reason with these people? Because I think part of the challenge is they're so anti-theology, anti-doctrine, oh, yeah. doctrine, anti-Bible, basically. They are. It's, it's really hard to reason with them, to even have it a is. rational conversation. It is. So how would you, since you've done so much of this, how would you tell us to approach people like that, and, and what would be the best way? You know, I, I would tell people uh, to, to show them from Scripture that the importance of doctrine, what the Bible has to say about it, the people in this movement think that their love for God is measured or based upon their feelings and their emotions, and and theology and doctrine are, uh, well, that's one thing, you know. But that that's that's for the scholars, that's for the professors. But your love for God, that's what's really important. And they have separated knowledge of God and love for God. But show them in the Bible how the Bible does not do this. And in fact, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 9, Paul says, And I pray that your love would abound still more and more in knowledge and real discernment. The Bible never separates knowledge of God and love for God. It always combines these things. And so the intellect is not the enemy of the Christian. The, the intellect, when we study to show ourselves approved, that's what we're supposed to do. And, uh, but they don't understand this. They, they, they have separated knowledge of God and love for God. Oh, yeah. uh, and I would also tell them, don't base your theology off of what you experience. I don't doubt that these people are having experiences. I don't doubt that they're getting Holy Ghost goosebumps. I don't doubt that they're hearing voices in their heads. Um, I don't doubt that they, many of them think that they've really had visions or something like that. But no matter how real an experience may seem to us, we cannot interpret the Bible by what we experience. We must interpret our experiences by the Bible. That's how it must be done. Because the same thing that students and people in Bethel and these other like-minded churches, the same thing they experience, pagans experience too. You know, they speak in tongues at Bethel. Well, guess what? Hindus speak in tongues too. Um, uh, some Mormons speak in tongues. Even a few Muslims, from what I've heard, speak in tongues. Hindus do it too. You can take video clips of what's called Kundalini, Hindu Kundalini. You can take video clips of Hindu Kundalini, put them side by side video clips of charismatics, and you can't tell the difference. Yeah. They look exactly yeah. alike. And they write, their writings are similar. Uh, yes. They're dipping into, like, explicitly. Dipping into that new right. age kind of yes. thought. Oh, so absolutely. Crazy. Absolutely. Uh, Bill Johnson has written a book called The, the Physics of Heaven. And yes. it yes. is absolutely loaded with just straight up new age um, philosophy. You know, and it's, and that's really what this stuff is. It, it's not Christian, it's pagan doctrine that has been wrapped in some Christian lingo to make it appear to be Christian when it's, when it's not. You know, they, they have 
it's not that they never talk about the Bible. They they will, but it's always out of context. Almost always out of context. And uh, but they take pagan notions, pagan theology, philosophy, wrap it in some Christian lingo to make it appear to be Christian, but it's not. Well, there's no greater there's no greater um, form of Christianity than to know that your experience is rooted in truth. And once you know that your Christianity, your spirituality is backed up by the truth of Scripture, uh, there's no substitute for that. Uh, that's how you can know that you're right with God, that you're having an authentic experience, that your emotions are rooted in reality and not just the figment of your imagination. And so I would say maybe last of all, what I, what I want Peter, uh, Justin to do is I want him to talk basically directly to people that, because here's the thing, I suspect people will take this and share this with people at Bethel. And so, so. people at Bethel, yeah, are going to watch this, how would you address someone that's really deep into Bethel, that they're committed, uh, you know, they're convinced that even speaking out against Bethel is wrong? What would you say to somebody like that? Yeah. The Bible has a lot to say about false teachers and false doctrine. In fact, 26 of the 27 books in the New Testament directly warn about false teaching and or false teachers. Only the book of Philemon has nothing to say about it at all. So so warning about false doctrine is a is a prominent theme in the New Testament. And the thing that makes false teachers so dangerous and so appealing at the same time is that not everything that false teachers teach is false. Some of it is right. But there it's that mixture of error and heresy along with some truth that makes it so profoundly dangerous. And the, the Bible says that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So how does Satan disguise himself? Not He doesn't show up red and scaly with a, a bifurcated tail and carrying a pitchfork. He, he disguises himself as an angel of light. You know, he looks appealing. And so uh, be very, very careful. Uh, don't just take at face value what Bill Johnson or Kenneth Copeland or what any of these others are saying just because they have a little bit of Christian lingo. Be like the Bereans in Acts chapter 17. Search the scriptures to see if these things are really so. And, and don't base your theology of what, on what you experience because I can promise you that pagans are having the same experiences that you are. So um, uh, go to the Word of God. And, and also this, if you'll notice the, the quote-unquote gospel that is being preached at Bethel or one of these churches, it is a it is a minimalistic gospel at best. In fact, Bethel is very famous, actually, for saying God is not mad at you. God's not mad at you. I, I've seen people in Bethel wearing the T-shirts. It actually says God is not angry. God is not mad at you. Well, yeah, he is. He's angry with the wicked every day. Uh, that's un until you see that you are a sinner who deserves nothing but the wrath of God. That's what your sins have earned. Until you see that uh, that you deserve God's wrath, then His mercy will make no sense. It is only when we understand the wrath of God that His mercy becomes precious to us. And uh, they have a minimalistic gospel. Uh, it's not, they don't preach true repentance. Um, so uh, come out and, uh, uh, and, and God is bringing His sheep out of this movement. Yeah, he is amen, doing amen. that. Yeah, we have a we have a wonderful sister at our church, Lindsay yeah. Davis, that every, a lot of people know in association with that movement. That and she has uh, a tremendous testimony. God's really uh, growing and maturing her, and so we pray that many testimonies like that will result from yeah. you know people seeing the truth. And and, and it, just you saying that, if I can tag on, one of the great ironies in this movement is that. The, the Bethel folks, the uh, Word of Faith, and they are, they would look at people like you and me, Emilio, and they would say, oh, you don't believe in the Holy Spirit. You don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. To the contrary, I am so confident in the power of the person of the Holy Spirit of God that I do not believe that someone can be indwelt by Him and teach the kind of blasphemies and heresies that Bill Johnson and others like him teach. And the true power of the Holy Spirit is not gold dust or you know people flopping around on the floor. That, that's not the Holy Spirit. The true power of the Holy Spirit is when He convicts someone of their sin, 
of the, the need for the gospel, he regenerates them, makes them alive in Christ, and changes their lives. The, 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 the new birth, that is the true power of the Holy Spirit of God. And, he, and those whom he saves, he sanctifies. He delivers people out of deception. So it is actually those people, the NAR folks, that have a diminished view of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, which is so ironic. Right. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's like the height of, of irony. Amen, brother. Well, that's good. Well, what's next for, for your ministry, Justin? What, 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 are you, what are you up to next? Uh, well, we're in early March of 2020, and uh, I've got a, a full schedule, preaching schedule coming up this year. I'll be okay. in Guatemala and uh, a few other places internationally uh, and maybe uh, in preaching and teaching. In Dallas, maybe. yes. Maybe. Yeah, Lord willing, <laughs> uh, next year. Yeah, this year, but, yeah uh, we're thinking about putting together a, a conference actually kind of around this theme, so... Yeah. Uh, the yeah. American gospel. Right. We both were contributors to yeah. that. Yeah. So we're thinking about maybe doing a conference around that theme. So uh, tune in at Red Grace Media just to stay up on that. But uh, hope, I hope that comes together. So. Yeah, me yeah. too. Amen, brother. Well, Justin, Emilio, thanks, brother. God love bless you, brother. You. Yeah. 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 Enjoy the rest of the conference. Yeah, you as well. Okay. <laughs>